Hello, Tilcon New York family. First of all, happy Easter. I hope you all had a good weekend. Uh, a couple things that I've been brought up on that I want to talk to you about is faith, hope, and charity. You know, right now we're in a tough situation around the world, and we need to make sure that we maintain the faith. You maintain the faith personally, maintain the faith for your family, and maintain the faith for us as an organization. And then, you know, we live in the greatest country in the world. You know, there's a lot of hope that we have each and every day. The hope that we have at our jobs, the hope we have our government. I mean, it's all there. It's important for us to maintain that hope. To make sure that we don't let any anxiety in the news and everything get us down. And then finally, charity. You know, we've heard so much about good uh, and charitable works throughout the United States and across the world. All these people come together to help each other. So maybe just calling an old friend, maybe even calling a neighbor, like uh, my wife and I have done, to see if they need something at the grocery store, or they need, uh, you know, they need something taken care of. So it's those charitable works, us working together as a society, that'll help sustain us. So today, it's important, you know, that we still maintain the social distancing. Uh, you know, we wear the face covering. We said on Thursday before we left for the holiday break. That it's going to be required for you to wear a face covering, whether it's an N95 mask that's left over. We ordered a, uh, you know, a lot of bandanas that we're going to be providing to everybody. You know, making sure that you cover your face when you're working in and around the, uh, you know, uh, others within the organization or on the outside. You know, make sure you wash your hands. Soap and water works. If you have to use a disinfectant, please do so. Hand sanitizer is okay, but it really doesn't get everything off of there. So once you take your gloves off, you should be wearing your gloves, making sure you wash your hands. And then, you know, disinfect it. We need to have, we need to disinfect our equipment, making sure we disinfect the work areas, both pre-shift and, you know, post-shift. And then, you know, tongue in cheek a little bit, I'll tell you that, you know, if we run out of paper towels, uh, we do have rags to use, but if you have to use uh, other rags, some of the things that are approved to use with regards to rags, or anything as such. You can use any kind of Flyers material, Eagles material, New York Rangers material, or Dallas Cowboys. Those are approved for rags. So this week we want to focus on the life-saving rules. It's, all, it's been all about the uh, COVID-19 over the past uh, approximately a month. But we still have people working at the, at the locations. So it's important that our focus, you know, once again, we have other safety rules that we have to follow. So it starts with the risk assessments. And the way I break it down is operations. You know, we start with the risk assessment, but we got to focus on things like lock, tag, and try. You know, personal protective equipment, equipment safety, confined spaces if we have to work there. You know, using your, your fall protection, making sure you're checking all your fall protection before you're putting it on, whether you're going up in a man lift, whether you're going up in a scissor lift, it doesn't really make a difference. We're making sure that we still focus on working at heights. If we're doing any hot work, remember we talked about a 35 foot circumference, if you have to do any hot work to make sure that you're picking up any combustible materials so we don't start any fires. And then obviously machine guarding. You know, making sure now that we're in the, starting back up, we may not have all the machines running, but what we do have running, we need to make sure that the machine guards are there. And now we might be down for a while. It's still a good. It's a good exercise to go out to your facilities and take a look and to make sure all the all the uh, all the uh, machine guards are in place. And then from the construction side, you know, we talk about the risk out there. There's some lockdowns that we have. We do. You know, we have our uh, our plans, our work safety zone safety plans that are important. You know, under and over utility dangers. You know, we've had a couple of situations already where some of the uh, third party haulers have hit overhead wires. Luckily, they've been cables and they haven't been electrical wires. So we need to have everybody kind of focused, the personal protective equipment, obviously equipment safety, and then obviously lifting operations, making sure that we're doing risk assessments and taking a look at the hazards associated with the jobs. And then finally, we have hazard recognition. Um, you know, I, I just want to explain, because I see the hazard recognition reports, I just want to do a quick explanation. Now I tried to get some stars available to make this video with me, but our budget was kind of low, so I had to hire the Legos guys. So they're helping me out with this example. So 
there's a hazard, a near miss, and an incident. And let me just explain real quick. We have a, a crescent wrench sitting here on a mezzanine. We have a worker down here about to get on a forklift, and we have a worker up here on the, on the mezzanine, and then we have four Lego guys just kind of hanging out in the plant, walking through. So a hazard is I'm down here as a forklift operator. I look, I see this crescent wrench hanging over the side. That's a hazard. So when you're recognizing a hazard, you're looking and say, oh, there's a hazard. If we don't do something about this hazard, it could end up hurting somebody or obviously damaging some property. The next part is a near miss. So if this crescent wrench was to fall and just miss the, uh, the police guy from the, uh, from the uh, you know, village people here, you know, it hits, it hits the ground, it doesn't break up the concrete, it doesn't hit the forklift, it doesn't strike anything, okay, that's a near miss. So that hazard, that recognized hazard that we had, now has an incident, okay, so a near miss then is a hazard in action. That's what we consider a hazard and a near miss. And then an incident would be if this crescent wrench fell and struck the person anywhere on his or her body, or it struck the forklift, potentially broke a hydraulic line, you know, where the guy lost control, hit the mezzanine, whatever the case may be. So an incident then is a direct hit. If somebody has a mark on their body, if there's a, some kind of damage to a piece of equipment, if a truck, a yellow iron that we have backs into a, a pole or backs into another vehicle, those are incidents. So just keep in mind, a hazard recognition, if you look at it, you say, oh, that's a hazard, we need to do something about that hazard. A near miss is when that hazard is in action, it falls and just misses somebody, and then an incident is when there's a direct hit. Somebody gets a mark on their body, there's some kind of damage to, uh, to a piece of property, there's some damage to equipment. So that's what we're talking about with regards to that. So when you're inputting incidents into the, into the system, these are the three differences that you have. Once again, please remain focused on safety. Your safety is important to us as Tilcon New York. You are our most important asset, and I can't, I can't state that enough. So please, focus on safety for yourself, and keep, keep a focus on your family, and keep the faith in Tilcon New York. Thank you.